Wait a minute, did Apple just win the AI arms race? Yeah, I just finished watching Apple's WWDC and despite being criticized as being late to the AI game, Apple in just one day showed off what I think is the most compelling use case of artificial intelligence in the most accessible way yet. And it's not like Apple has added features that we haven't seen before in some form or another, but the way that Apple demoed these features and the way that they integrated these features across all of their platforms is truly going to lead to mass adoption of AI at scale that we haven't seen before. And this truly is AI for the rest of us. At Apple, it's always been our goal to design powerful personal products that enrich people's lives by enabling them to do the things that matter most as simply and easily as possible. It's personal intelligence, and it's the next big step for Apple. And that all starts with the naming. Yeah, Apple is so, so good at marketing because they took a term that is widely being used across the entire tech industry right now and just made it their own. Apple isn't calling their AI features artificial intelligence like every other company is constantly doing and using that buzzword all the time and conflating all of these different features together. No, Apple is separating themselves from the pack smartly and they are calling these features Apple intelligence. That is just, that's genius. That is brilliant. Whoever came up with that, they deserve a pay raise, Tim. So not only does this separate Apple's features from maybe some of the more controversial artificial intelligence features, you know, the ones that are trying to take our jobs, but it also co-ops the generic term of AI and it puts Apple's branding ahead of it. The reason why this is so ingenious is because right now I would say that AI, despite being a huge buzzword, is still pretty niche. And most people have not knowingly adopted the use of AI features or are not willingly seeking them out. But Apple has a really large user base. And when this user base updates their iPhones, their iPads, or their Macs to the new operating systems this fall, they are going to be greeted with all of these new Apple intelligence features. And for most users, this will likely be their first major exposure to these types of AI features. And when they talk about these features to other people, they're going to call them Apple intelligence features rather than artificial intelligence. You may not like that fact, but it's a fact that I am certain is going to come to pass. This means AI to the mainstream possibly just means Apple intelligence. It's kind of like using a search engine. Like even if someone was using Bing, you probably wouldn't tell them to Bing something, you would tell them to Google something. So when your friends, your family, your coworkers, your classmates, when they get help with Siri or with their writing or they generate a new emoji, they are going to call those artificial intelligence features Apple intelligence features. It's branding 101. Again, it is so, so smart. But Apple intelligence is more than just a great marketing decision. It's actually a really compelling feature set that Apple is focusing on. And more importantly, it's how they are surfacing those features to users. Apple is building AI across their entire device lineup for the iPhone, the iPad, and the Mac. And a lot of those AI features are going to be running directly on device rather than being kicked off to the cloud. This means two very important things. First of all, because a lot of those requests will be running on device, it should lead to a consistent and hopefully a fast experience every time you go to use one of those features. You as the user won't have to worry if some server is being overloaded with requests or how good your current internet connection is or how many tokens you have left to use an AI feature or worry about paying for some subscription fee for advanced AI features. It also enables a very, very important advantage for Apple that no other company can quite replicate right now. Trust, yeah. Apple isn't in the business of selling your data, and most of us already trust Apple with their strong privacy stance on our devices. And because we feel comfortable giving Apple access to our most sensitive data, like our messages, our photos, our health, our email, our contact lists, that is going to help them surface relevant personalized AI features. Because the more data these AI services know about you, the more data they can use for their large language models, and the more they can help you with your personal tasks. But let me ask you this question. Out of any company right now, 
would you feel comfortable giving access to all of your important data, the exact details and nuances of your very life to any other company besides Apple? Like if I went to go use ChatGPT and they asked me to upload all of my contacts or my health records to use their service, I wouldn't because I know they are going to use that data to train their AI models. And despite having higher trust in other institutions like Google or Microsoft, again, I'd be pretty wary with how much data I let them access, knowing that part of their business strategy is to collect as much data as possible so they can serve more relevant ads or use this data to pull ahead in the AI arms race. Apple's privacy stance, even for those of us that are wary of AI, makes us more trusting. It gives them the benefit of the doubt because they aren't going to be scraping or storing your data on servers, and they are going to be doing most of these AI requests on device, privately, and securely, and most of this information won't even leave your phone. Even if it does leave your phone, Apple said they are making custom servers that respect your privacy and are running custom Apple Silicon chips and they will use end-to-end -end encryption so Apple has no idea who is sending these requests and they won't have any record of who's sending it or they won't even save that data on a server. But let me get back to my point. AI excels based on the data it has and with Apple intelligence able to pull all that information from your devices, Apple has a unique strategy that third-party AI services just can't replicate. ChatGPT may have an app on your phone, but they're never going to get full access to all of the data on your phone. They're never going to have your complete photo library or all of your writing samples. They're not going to know who in your contacts is your mother, your father, or a friend. And that is a major disadvantage for other AI services. And that's what I can see with Apple's implementation of Apple Intelligence. And the most important part of all of this is that it isn't being built into a separate app. It's being built system-wide across every app that you use, even third-party apps. I think the clearest example of this is the AI writing tools that Apple is rolling out. Now, we've seen versions of these AI writing tools before, and the exact features are not that important here because you can use a lot of these other features in other apps like ChatGPT. But what separates Apple's AI writing tools is that they're going to be implemented across every writing app you use. So if you're composing in mail or writing in notes or using a third-party app like Bear Notes, you don't have to hop out of that app into a separate AI app to check your spelling or summarize uh, these notes or make your writing more concise. You can all do it directly in the app that you prefer to use and the one that you are already using. Not only is that gonna make these features more convenient to the user, but more importantly, more discoverable to the user. The average user won't have to go hunting for these features. It will be more automatic. And because Apple has access to your personal data, rather than just a random swath of internet data, these tools can be more personalized to fit your specific needs. Like the demo they provided with the Photos app, where you can use more intelligent search by using AI to describe what a photo looks like. And then AI can pull up those photo search results in the Photos app. So the more I look at it, the more I realize that Apple's approach to AI is one of the more practical applications I've seen so far. I've played around with a lot of dedicated AI services or dedicated AI devices, and while they're really impressive and honestly, mind-blowing at what they're capable of, they still haven't provided me with enough utility for me to use these features on a daily basis. I was talking to my friend the other day and I said for most AI use cases right now, it feels like their best ability is to do a Google search for you and sometimes provide you the wrong answer when you use it. Apple's approach to focus on helping you write better or summarize notifications, surfacing urgent emails or messages, quick smart reply in emails, providing transcription summaries or expanding series capabilities are all use cases I can see actually saving me time or making my tasks easier on a daily basis. Of course, there's other AI powered features that go beyond just helping you manage your daily workflows. I think one of the more surprising announcements that Apple showed off was an image generator. And listen, I'm gonna be the first one to say, 
I think Apple should scrap this feature. I don't think Apple should be getting into the image generator game. AI images usually look awful and their implementation to me looks just as bad as what we've seen from other soulless AI services. But what I will give Apple credit here for, the more I read into it, is despite not liking AI image generation, this one is personalized. Apple intelligence has context, so you can generate a superhero image of your mom, even though it looks awful, without having to first feed it a photo. The fact that it already has the photo context, the fact that it can already scrub your device to know who your mom is, that's what makes this feature more seamless and more impressive when you consider this image generation is running all on device. And while I didn't like Apple's implementation of this service, I really liked Apple's implementation of generative emoji, which they're calling Genmoji. This is AI creation done right, because these generative emoji look like actual emoji. It doesn't look like some weird image. And it offers an unlimited amount of options and variability that just aren't there with the current finite emoji picker. And because it's personalized, it'll give your conversations more of a sense of personalization and a touch of your own personality. And I keep coming back to that, personalization, because that is something that is desperately needed in what currently feels like a world of robotic AI features trying to strip us of our own identity. And Apple spelled that all out. They said Apple intelligence is committed to personalization and to privacy. But the biggest shock to me out of all of these Apple intelligence announcements was just how little Apple is relying on third-party AI services. When I first heard the rumors that Apple was partnering up with OpenAI for their ChatGPT service, I assumed that all of these features that Apple was announcing were going to be based off of ChatGPT4. But I was wrong. All of these features I mentioned are all Apple-designed models running securely and privately, not even using ChatGPT. And while there is a partnership with ChatGPT, it's more like a last resort option. Like Apple will even pop up a warning and make you confirm your request every time you wanna send it off to ChatGPT. Now listen, I am fully aware that these features are not out yet. They're not even in beta. And while Apple promises a seamless and personalized integration of Apple intelligence into their devices, we are kind of taking them at their word at this point. And let's be honest, Apple hasn't had the best track record with uh, similar services in the past. <coughs> Siri, <coughs> Siri. <coughs> However, I am optimistic on Apple's approach to AI. And while they were behind in artificial intelligence, I think they may have just taken the lead. But let me know, what are your thoughts on Apple intelligence? And do you plan to use any of these new AI features? And if you do, which one is your favorite? As always, if you liked the video, make sure you give me a like. If you wanna see more, make sure you're subscribed. And as always, thank you so much for watching. And hopefully I'll see you in the next one. Unless AI takes over before these AI features come out. And uh, well, then you can watch AI Greg. Probably not as handsome as me, but probably smarter.